morning. Here in Botswana, we are seeing a lot of churches that are very involved in the prosperity gospel. Uh, some to a greater, some to a lesser degree, but this has really been an infection in the churches. And I thought it appropriate to uh, to say a few words about it, to try to, to carry it in light of the scripture, which is ultimately what's important for the Christian. There is such a broad testimony of scripture against uh, the prosperity gospel. I couldn't possibly do that in any kind of a reasonable video. That's not why people watch the videos. However, there is a link in the description to a blog I have done, which is pretty lengthy, uh, and it's a, it's a broad-based uh, blog. What we're going to look at today here in this video is primarily just in regard to riches, but prosperity gospel is more than just riches. It's about the, your entire life being prosperous because you're a Christian. Uh, kind of ignores things like suffering and, and stuff like that. And so again, the, the link to the blog will be in the description. I encourage you to look at it. Uh, it's, it's definitely worth your time. It's a little bit more involved than most of what you get on the internet. I think the prosperity gospel is very popular because, of course, it tells you that you will be rich. If you behave the right way, you do the right things, you will be rich. Often that comes from giving. They say if you will give to, to the church, to a certain leader, to a project, God will double your money or such like that, which really isn't found in Scripture. But you can see why people would like to hear it. It's something tangible that they can do, and they expect big returns from it. But I think it's a great fulfillment also of prophecy, a prophecy that we read, that I'm going to read now from 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Other than that, I'd be wondering, you know, why do people even listen to this? Don't they know the Bible? Obviously, I've studied the Bible a lot, but even uh, moderate Christians you know, typically know uh, enough of the Bible uh, to realize that this is kind of a, a pipe dream, let's say. Uh, the riches that we have with Christ will be eternal. But I have called this a forsaking of faith. Now, what we see in Hebrews chapter 11, often called the faith chapter, we see that without faith it is impossible to please God, for whosoever comes to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And then we understand from 11.1, 1, we understand that faith is the evidence of things not seen. Now God wants us to live by faith. He has said over and over, the just shall live by faith. That faith is not just belief in the existence of God but that he is the living God and that he will supply our needs. And so the Lord kind of showed me an analogy that we could use. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, you will see that the children of Israel desired a king. At this point, they were following the prophets. Really what they were doing is they were following God through the prophets. And the prophet Samuel was leading them, but they went to Samuel and they said, please, we want a king like the nations around us. So you can see that this is a forsaking of faith. They didn't want to put faith in the God that they couldn't see. They wanted a king whom they could see. And it is very much like this with the prosperity gospel. Instead of walking by faith, day to day, they are walking by the sight of their riches. Now there might be some, there might be one who would get rich and say, well, I owe God for my riches. But the thing is, once you have a pile of money, you are no longer walking by faith, you are walking by the sight of your riches. And so God doesn't encourage this. Luke 11.3 is where Jesus, it's a part of where Jesus is teaching his disciples to pray. And 11.3 simply says, give us day by day our daily bread. That will tell you the way God feels about it. But I think those with the prosperity gospel face another problem too. I mean, I can't help but wonder what do they do with the broad testimony of Scripture? What do they do with, with passages like from 1 Timothy chapter 6? I'll just read verse from verses 9 through 12. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many hurtful and foolish lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Again, it is such a clear testimony. Most people are, are well aware of 6.10 when it says, The love of money is the root of all evil. But the man of God is told to flee from these things. So how is it that these come to God, saying he will make us rich, and that's something he desires? Is it expressed in his word? It clearly is not. One of the incredible examples that we can see in Scripture about this is when Jesus had confronted what we, you know, who we call the, the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler ran up to Jesus. This is recorded in Matthew 19, Mark chapter 10, and Luke chapter 18. You can find it. And in this, the rich young ruler ran to Jesus. He, was, he wanted, he was seeking what he needed yet for eternal life. And Jesus said he had to give up his riches. He needed to give to the poor, and he would have treasure in heaven, and then he could come and follow him. But of course, the rich young ruler did not want to do this. He wasn't ready to give up his riches. Now, in these three accounts, these three Gospels, Jesus says two times in Matthew, three times in Mark, and two times in Luke, consecutively, how hard it is for the rich to inherit the kingdom of God. It is nearly impossible. And that salvation itself without God is impossible. So the question you know, naturally comes, why would God give you riches if he knew he was making it harder for you to get to heaven? It just makes no sense. It makes no sense at all to me. However, we can see how the Lord wants us to live. And I've chosen a part from Luke chapter 12, verses 29 through 32. Okay? And in this, of course, I read from the King James. I come, they actually have uh, the word ye, Y-E, you know, about four times, I think. And just so you know, the word ye means you, but in the plural. It means like you all. And you see the, the thee, the thine, thou, things with T-H, that's singular. And so that's just what it is. And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye rather the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I love the Word, I love the Bible, and I love the different ways it is even phrased within the Word. But you see here when he is saying not to seek seek after what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Don't get caught up in trying to go after these provisions. It says, neither be of doubtful mind. He's saying, don't doubt. Have faith. Trust me. Everybody needs these things. Your father knows you have need of these things. But also when he says, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after. This is one of my problems with the prosperity gospel. Why is it being preached? Everybody in the world wants to be rich. How are we different from the world when we're seeking riches? It makes no sense. It is certainly not faith and trust in the unseen God, in unseen provision. It is a trust in what we can see. And I also like, of course, he says to seek the kingdom of God, and then he will add all these things to you. He's telling you to get your priorities straight and not to worry about it. And he has that encouragement at the end. Fear not, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What a reassurance from the Son of God, our Savior. So please, people, read the Bible, check out the description below, and walk in faith with the Lord. He will not let you down. May God bless.